The way to get rid of tension is to do just the opposite of all the things that cause it. Hello everyone, this is Hugo from Mitsuo Painting and today I'll be touching a really good question that I, somebody sent me via email. Um, <clears throat> it's from a lad called Phil. And um, basically what he asked me is that um, when is the good time to set down your airbrush? Meaning that uh, basically what can you do with your airbrush and what can you what can't you do with your airbrush, right? It's a really tricky question, okay? I'm gonna get into it now, you know, you just see me and, I, and then I'm gonna give you some example uh, showing you with the camera. Um, really good question because when you start off with your airbrush, if you're a beginner and I, I think if I remember his email correctly, he's just starting out with an airbrush or it's not been a long time that he's using an airbrush so when you're starting out with an airbrush most people uh, think that you can only base coat with an airbrush either you're doing vehicles or single miniatures or squad and stuff like that you can only base coat with an airbrush and that isn't true there's so many things that you can do with your airbrush and the more you're gonna get confidence with your airbrush the more you're gonna you know decide and try and test out new things and, and new ways that you're gonna actually use and apply your airbrush. But it's kind of a really complicated question because there's so many factors that come in, in, in the line. Um, for example, do you assemble your whole miniature together before painting it? If we're talking about a single miniature, right? A uh, normal <clears throat> Warhammer size uh, miniature. Do you assemble the full, the fully the miniature? If you do, then doing detailing work with the airbrush is going to be a little bit more complicated. If you do not assemble it all uh, with your uh, uh, before doing airbrush, then you're going to be able to do some different kind of detailing, but you won't be able to do zenital uh, kind of fade or color blending or shadows and stuff like that. I'm going to get into it in the t into a little bit more detail when we're going to look at a miniature. But it's a really important question and I really want to take the time to talk about it and this video might be a little bit longer than 15 minutes but I am really trying to make this uh, very precise and very informative because it's actually a very important question. I personally use my airbrush and I use my brush. There's no way you can do a miniature or even a vehicle without using your brush. You're always going to use both. But when is the time or when is it a good time to switch from one to another? Then we're going to get into it uh, into the next segment of the video. So here I have two miniatures uh, right there. We have an Emperor's Champion and we have an uh, Ultramarine uh, Captain. Okay. Um, if you look at those two miniatures, okay, the first thing I want to touch out is what we call zenital uh, effect, right, or spraying, which implies that you're going to be spraying a darker color. So if you look from underneath the, 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 the model, it looks a little bit darker. And then when you look at it from the top, it does uh, look a little bit more brighter. Okay, so how do you achieve this kind of zenital um, <clears throat> zenital um, technique is by spraying your model a darker color when you start so for the ultramarine color pattern normally what I do is I spray the whole model black then once it's done in black I spray it midnight blue and then once the midnight blue is done I take my trusty airbrush and I spray from the top of the model so I want to cover the model from the top here simulating a, a light point that's here so illuminating the model from the top which means that all the areas that are going to be covered like the legs because his arm is here and it covers the leg these areas won't be touched by uh, by the lighter color which is going to give actually a better fade actually this, this one is not the best example because it's not showing through really well but uh, I'll grab another one uh, just before we finish this segment and show it to you but what I want to show you is that this model okay if you assemble it all like that you're gonna be able to do zenital spraying because the model by having the arms here or if we take this one the arms when you're shooting from the top these arms is gonna create a shadow on the normal body of the the, the model so it's gonna give you to create that super cool effect okay but if you want to go into detailing with your airbrush for a single miniature it's gonna be really really hard to achieve the zenital uh, look 
if you don't assemble the whole model together so imagine if the arms were not there if I did the zenital technique there would be some light spot on the leg here because now the arm is here but it, imagine it's not there then the, the the ultramarine color would be sprayed on top and would hit the leg but then after that when you put the arm it wouldn't happen like that right so <clears throat> this is one thing that you need to choose uh, if you want to do that zenital kind of spraying uh, on your model you're gonna use the airbrush the model is gonna be all, all assembled but then after that you're gonna limited, be limited in the detail that you can do right why because it's simple as that if you want to spray the arm it's you're gonna need to mask the whole arm if you want to do the shoulder pads it's the same thing you're gonna have to mask the shoulder pads on the model and then like for example if you're trying to do the bar the border on the shoulder uh, uh, pads then it's going to be really hard to go in bet behind there because of this so it's going to actually give you a whole lot of, uh, of problems to be able to uh, to do those details if you still assemble the whole model uh, like this and you still want to do some detail like for example I did the shoulder pad using on this one using the airbrush because I really wanted a smooth finish okay so and a drop of white came in the face of the guy but it's not important what you can use uh, you can either use masking tape but another little trick that you can use is a simple latex glove so let's for example let's say that this guy is actually a crimson fist um, guy then what you want to do is you want to take your um, you want to take your uh, your latex glove put the miniature in right and then after that you want to use something sharp like this and do a little hole in the latex glove right, like so right and then spread it a little bit make it a little bit bigger sorry I'm not doing it super right but not really prepared for that I'm really sorry about that this looks like unorganized video filming then my hole is too big now but you, you get the principle you want to do a small hole and in, in, uh, put the miniature or the part that you want to spray in this hole so then you're gonna be able it's gonna be very easy for you to spray this area without covering the whole model but this is limited because there's so much you can do with this technique for swords and power swords it's really easy um, if you would do a head it would be really hard because most of the space marines and stuff like that they have shoulder pads that come pretty high on the model so it's going to be hard to, to make the the latex glove go in and, and only single out the head uh, like for example on this model I actually had to paint the whole arm here because it was really I could have taped it but I didn't want to tape it since it's black it's really easy to cover but you're gonna have to do a whole lot of masking with masking tape or liquid masking tape or techniques like that if you want to go in with certain details if you take a model that's unassembled uh, before but sometimes it's not it, it's not working because you're gonna have a metal model that is already all assembled except one arm or something like that but if you do have the plastic models and you want to go in into making more detail first of all it depends on what kind of airbrush you're using if you're air using an airbrush that's pretty small in, in needle size like for example a 0.2 mil uh, millimeter or a 0.15 millimeter then it's gonna be easier for you to go do those details and stuff like that but for a single model it's still really hard if you have a single model that's a little bit harder then you, you're gonna be able to to go in and do those little details and stuff like that but still on a normal model it's still gonna be pretty hard would be really hard to go in and do his cloak here because he is small cloak in the in front in the back is the same thing on the Emperor's ch uh, champion model the the cloak in the back is pretty small so even if you have a really small airbrush you won't be able to do the highlights really well on that if you do have a model like for say for example this uh, captain here does have a bigger cloak so if you would want to airbrush the cloak it would be possible and it would be a little bit easier because the recess and the and the areas that are bigger are more accessible and easier to paint with the airbrush but personally as a painter um, 
using the airbrush for cloak and and and, uh, and clothing and stuff like that and fabric uh, if you do if you do use a glazing technique you will always have better results it will always look nicer and it will, it will always be uh, nicer so and it's the same thing for most of the detail if you're pretty good with your brush you're gonna be able to achieve really nice detailing with your brush without using the airbrush and if you're precise also um, why the airbrush is so good is that it, it does help you um, um, paint the model faster if you're doing assembly style working uh, on your models and it's gonna do is gonna allow you to do like I just explained at the beginning of the video zenital kind of spraying technique which is gonna give you a nice fade and a, and a, a nice uh, look to your miniature I'm just gonna go grab another miniature that I just did that has a, a stronger zenital uh, technique on it then you're gonna be able to see so here I have one of um, uh, ultramarine again, uh, like always, an ultramarine sorry um, command squad member, right? So if you look at it like this, and from this angle, it looks pretty ultramarine blue, right? But like, let's turn him around. If you look at this, you can see the shadows, right? And this is not created by my light. If you look at it from underside, like this, from this angle, or even here, you're gonna see that it's actually darker here. So, and the same thing from the back. You see, even his back here is all dark blue, and the leg here is dark blue. But as you turn it around like this you don't notice that anymore and when you look at it like this it just looks like natural uh, shading from the light but it's actually done from zenital spraying so that's the technique that you spray from the top so that's the results you, you're gonna have so if you compare it this one is actually a little bit more subtle and uh, <clears throat> on this one is actually more dramatic uh, in an effect even on the shoulder pad you see this here is actually darker and if you turn it around it's actually a, a blue so as I move it around right now you can really notice that it's not made with my uh, my light but it's actually painted on the model inside of his hand here too you see it's darker so this is what zenital spraying will make you achieve but as far as detail as you can see I sprayed the whole model and now I'm working out uh, with my uh, paintbrush all, all the other details are made with the paintbrush so it really depends on you how far you want to go in and what kind of model you're working in uh, with you know and also the colors you know if I, if I'm painting a helmet if I'm painting an helmet uh, blue uh, or with details of red like that I don't mind doing it with my uh, my paintbrush because you know painting it red is not a big a difficult color to work with right so if you dilute your paint you slap some red onto it and you do a couple of layers and then you're, you're you know you're bingo you're all right uh, if you're painting the helmet white then it might be a little bit different right you might want to uh, to airbrush it same thing as uh, as I mentioned before with the Empress Champion that's why I actually sprayed uh, the, the shoulder pad white with the airbrush is because it, it, white is a harder color if I for say would have done this this shoulder the pad blue then I wouldn't have sprayed I would have only used my my brush because it's faster okay yes the airbrush is, is a little bit faster to spray it in terms of spraying but at the same time if you look at it from another angle if you're just doing a small detail you have to clean your whole airbrush after you're done so by mixing your paint putting your paint in your airbrush starting your compressor then shooting the small part then after that you know washing the whole airbrush and you're done it's it's a little bit too much work for just one part or something of course if you're doing a power weapon a power weapon has the whole effect of changing color and fading away uh, into different colors so you're gonna be using an airbrush of course because it's gonna give the best result but if you're talking about a single color I wouldn't really recommend it okay let's move on into another area which are vehicles right so here I have uh, a Land Raider let me replace the camera a little bit I'm sorry about that it's not super good but I'm doing my best and it's kind of a long video so um, here we do have a Land Raider that I finished not long ago so if you're looking at a, a vehicle what actually can you do with the airbrush is actually you know more uh, there is more opportunities and more ways that you can use your airbrush since you have bigger parts right you know if you compare a single miniature everybody knows the size of it right so the bigger the areas are the easier it is if you look at uh, you know this model the door here were not painted with an airbrush it was painting with a brush because you want to achieve a certain look and it's really hard to, to make it 
happen with the airbrush. Uh, all the smaller smaller details are going to be made with the airbrush, but everything else will be uh, with the paintbrush. But everything else that's big enough in size to be able to uh, to be uh, used will be actually painted with the airbrush. So uh, you know the gun, the black on the guns, the guns here, that every part of the uh, the model. Of course, right now I'm showing you an ultramarine uh, Land Raider, which doesn't give you so much opportunity to use uh, paint, uh, use your airbrush. But if it was another chapter with different color or different pattern, uh, you know, for example, if this was a gray knight, and you could spray the whole model gray, and then you could do the the little reddish design here it's really easy to mask on this, these areas uh, this area to separate it from the rest with masking tape and then paint it uh, the color you want so it really depends on you but the bigger the area or the bigger the thing you're painting the easier is going to be for you to be able to give a good look and uh, to give a good effect and use your airbrush effectively without you know messing up something but you know you do rem need to remember that having some masking tape having some uh, some liquid masking tape or having some um, uh, play-doh also not play-doh but thumb tack the blue tack thing can also help you mask you know uh, I put blue tack inside the the ducts when I'm doing here so normally uh, if I'm if I'm gonna paint the uh, uh, the exterior and I already painted the interior normally what I'll do is that I'll open the thing and I'll stick some thumb tack from underneath here and it covers this area instead of going put masking tape it's always a pain in the butt to put masking tape inside the tank so thumb tack can help you <coughs> also uh, do some uh, masking on on the tank so but you're gonna have to mask areas when you're gonna be using your airbrush <clears throat> to ensure that your paint is not gonna go flying everywhere so um, same thing with uh, I'll just gonna give uh, go grab my Revenant Titan and I'm working on so that way I'm gonna be able to show it to you because that one I did use my airbrush a little bit more on it so here you have the <clears throat> parts that I have painted from the Revenant Titan so you have the body the body was made using the zenithal uh, airbrushing so if you look at it from here it's a dark blue but if you look at it from here it's a lighter blue so you can see it here it looks pretty badass I, I think I did a pretty good job on the color uh, the way it transitioned you see here is all darker blue but here is lighter blue the color transition is really nice and actually I pushed it a little bit more further uh, than a normal zenithal where you uh, <coughs> paint you know you have your primer your base color and then you're gonna paint uh, with a darker color then after that you're gonna paint with the lighter on this one I also use the zenithal on the primer itself meaning that what I did is that the primer I use I sprayed black primer from underneath then I sprayed gray primer or uh, white primer from the top so to create that zenithal transition in the primer itself and then after that I went in and I did the same thing with the main colors so uh, to give that this this nice cool look and this actually was all made uh, with homemade colors so I mixed my own paint but on the main body itself nothing was made with the airbrush uh, in detail work why is everything else was made with paint because you know the there's not that many detail and the gems they need to be uh, they need to be done with um, they need to be done by hand anyway but once it's done I'm gonna have you know I'm gonna airbrush the the dust or soot that's gonna be coming from the exhaust fan I'm gonna be airbrushing the same thing here some uh, some burn marks <clears throat> on the back of it with the airbrush but it's gonna keep the airbrush to a minimum but then if you move to the head the head is a different story actually if you look at the the color itself you see it's changing this is pearl colors so the white is actually pearl white and the red is actually uh, pearl red also but if you look at the the head but then I did spray this area with the airbrush so I had to mask the whole area with the masking tape then spray this color and then this was sprayed white you know so it really like like I said and I'm repeating myself but since it was a question asked I really wanted to take time uh, to talk about it but it really does depend on how you want to make <clears throat> how much you want to push it how much do you want to use the tape and stuff like that and are you using special colors or you're not meaning that you know for example here these are special colors the the pearl colors are not colors that you're actually normally gonna use 
uh, with spraying uh, painting with a paintbrush these colors are, are made to be sprayed on with an airbrush so I couldn't have done this part with my you know my free hand if I had the choice if it was a color normal I probably would have done this with by brush but now meaning that they were special colors I did it by brush so you really need to take in consideration when you're deciding should I do it with my airbrush or should I go in with my brush is to take in consideration time wise which one is the fastest technique to do and then result wise which one is gonna look the best you know so if it's a single color and if it's a darker color like blues black and reds and stuff like that colors that color uh, that cover really well then it's always probably better to go in and do it with your um, do it with your paintbrush because you can uh, you know do it pretty faster without the hassle of cleaning everything if you're doing fades then you need to decide which one is the best for you which one is the best looking fade for you if you like this kind of effect then this is going to be achieved by glazing to have a really drastic contrast between a dark red and a lighter red this is going to be uh, made by with glazing if you do the same thing the same cloak using your airbrush then you won't have that, that dramatic uh, blending and it's not going to be as smooth as it is the airbrush is going to leave some little dots and, and if you look it up close so you're gonna be able to see that it was airbrush compared to if you you blend it by glazing you won't be able to to do it so I really hope that this long ass video did answer uh, your question fills uh, or everybody else that uh, actually has been wondering that so basically it's a personal uh, it's a personal decision that you have to make whether or not you should keep going or you should do these details or these details with the airbrush and it's it it goes as far as you want it to go so uh, if you want it to go into doing the ultramarine on his shoulder pad with the airbrush then it's up to you you're gonna be the one spending uh, 15 minutes trying to mask uh, his shoulder pad and mask the whole model to be able to spray that and if you do a mistake that's one thing you also have to take in consideration if you do make a mistake while you're spraying uh, by mistake I mean if you're um, if your masking tape was not well placed on the model then you might have some overspray that's gonna go under your masking tape and hit the color the area where you didn't want to actually have paint and then you're gonna have to you know uh, correct that error and this error could be dramatic you know for example if I did the these parts on the the Titan if I mask the the shoulder pad and then I sprayed with the airbrush I sprayed this area and I would have an overspray that would go on the shoulder then I'm fucked because the shoulder is not exactly the, the same color everywhere since I use the airbrush there's a fade going on down there so I cannot take the same color with my brush and go do a touch-up because you it's gonna pop up you're gonna see it right away so this is this is all the things you have to take in consideration when you're gonna be deciding do I do this or this or this or this these detail using the airbrush or I go in with my brush um, of course the airbrush when you can use it it's always going to give you a better result and everything compared to a brush but it really depends on where and how you use it and it's not don't think about the airbrush as being a tool made for only uh, base coating or only things like that no the airbrush gives you so much more possibilities and stuff like that like pre-shading doing some uh, some weathering doing color fades doing power weapon it gives you so much uh, ability and so much new uh, techniques to use but at what cost time wise and everything you do have to remember that but don't think about it being just for base coating this other thing but you do need to explore you do need to learn new techniques and you do need to try those new techniques it might not work at first but the more you're gonna do it the more you're gonna get uh, used to it the more you're gonna nail down what you can do and what's out of your uh, of, of your range you could do freehand with the airbrush man I'm, I'm not the best one at freehanding with my airbrush but some people would write stuff on it or do freehand instead of doing it with a, a normal paintbrush they would do it with the airbrush there's some artists out there that are really nice and really good you know that's another thing you can do I personally don't do it because I'm not that good do I practice it yes I do practice it sometimes you know I take a piece of plastic I prime it and I just practice doing some designs and stuff like that with the airbrush 
but you know that's that's things that again you need to practice and you need to try so I'm sorry if I made this video really long I wanted to be really thorough I didn't want to separate this video into two section I wanted to talk about it in one big video uh, and that's pretty much it so I hope you like it this was Hugo from Ichiban Painting and I'll see you on the next video Thank you.